Welcome to this tutorial we are going to be doing today on the different muscle types in your body. And before I say anything else, I'll just write that this view of the person I have here is an anterior view, and we'll be looking at everything uh, from this view. So far we've talked a bit about joints uh, and functional groups of muscles such as prime movers, antagonists and uh, synergists, but this all relates to the action you're trying to achieve with that muscle. In this video we're going to focus a bit more on the actual shape of the muscle itself and how to name them accordingly. So to do that, the first thing we need to remember is that all skeletal muscle is going to contain fascicles. Fascicles being the uh, groups of your muscle cells themselves or muscle fibers and the arrangement of these fascicles is going to determine how that muscle is capable of moving and it will also determine the name. So I'll just uh, make this drawing a bit darker so I can highlight the right muscles and the first type we're going to look at is a digastric muscle. A digastric muscle will have two muscle bellies, the belly being the body of the muscle itself and with a continuous tendon in between both of those bodies. So an intermediate tendon. And an example of this uh, is actually conveniently named the digastric muscle. And we're going to see the digastric muscle below our jaw that I've just highlighted there. And it's going to extend from the anterior base of your mandible to your mastoid process and it's going to then uh, connect in the middle via that central tendon to your hyoid bone. So we can see before we're even too far into this video that these muscle types can be really quite complex. So it's important to be able to look at and distinguish these yourself so you can guess uh, accurately what type of muscle it is. Now looking at our second type we have a fusiform muscle. The fusiform muscles are going to be a spindle or cylindrical in shape and run in a straight line and a good example of this will be your biceps. So you can see I've highlighted the long head of our biceps brachy muscle on our anatomical drawing here. So it's a fusiform muscle. So far we've seen fascicle arrangements that go directly in a straight line from one end of the tendon to the next. But this next type is part of a larger group called pennate muscles. And pennate muscles are differ here. The first one we're going to look at is a multi-pennate. A multi-pennate muscle is going to have its fibers or the fascicle arrangements running at multiple angles and I'll show this up on the uh, deltoid as well. So this is going to be part of your deltoid muscle and we can see these fibers running in all different directions. And there we go, we have the deltoid on the screen as well. And that's going to reflect its function. If we remember back to our fusiform muscle now, the fibers are going in one single direction and that reflects the fact that the bicep is going to only be really flexing. But with our deltoid, we have all these fibers going in all separate directions. And that's going to reflect the fact that this muscle, this uh, deltoid muscle, is going to be supporting our most freely movable joint in the body. So our ball and socket joint of the shoulder, the glenohumeral joint. And that's how this form has to reflect the function. Now the next type of muscle we're going to look at is called a sphincter. Now you can either call it a sphincter or a circular muscle and the fibers or the arrangement of the fascicles once again are going to be in rings and they usually surround openings in the body and I'll just show it up here on the eye. So for the orbicularis oculi muscle and I'm sure you can imagine where else in the body we have openings that you will find a sphincter. Moving back to our pennate muscles now, we have this second type called a bipennate. Bipennate being two directional. So the fibers are going to run in two directions. So let's quickly have a think about where that name pennate comes from. 
with our fusiform and our, our digastric muscle, we can see that the fibers are running in a straight line. So the fibers are running in the same direction as the force generating axis. But when we have a pennate muscle, the fibers are going to be running in angles away from that force generating axis. And this angle is called a pennation angle. So the pennation angle is why we name pennate muscles pennate. So I've just highlighted our rectus femoris muscle down on the leg here, and I'm going to show you that those fascicles are going to be running in different directions. So they're running obliquely to each other. This is going to result in that pennation angle because the force generating axis of that muscle is straight down. And the third and last type of pennate muscle we have is a unipennate. And in a unipennate, all of the muscle fibers are going to be on the same side of the tendon, but they're still going to be running obliquely. So we can see that here. So this is our extensor digitorum muscle, which will be on the posterior side of our arm, so on the back, and all of the fibers are running on one side of its tendon. And the next type of muscle we have is tricipital. A tricipital muscle, you can probably guess straight away, is going to be named after our triceps. And it's a muscle that has three heads. So once again, that muscle is going to be on the posterior of the arm. So behind the bicep and behind our humerus bone. So on the back side of our arm. Now one of the last types of muscle we're going to look at is called triangular. And with a triangular muscle, you may also hear it called a convergent muscle or a fan muscle. And we can see I've highlighted our pectoralis major. And the reason we call it a convergent or fan muscle is because all of the fibers are going to fan out from the tendon. So the tendon is going to be attaching to our humerus at the bicipital groove. And from there, it will extend out across our chest. And that's going to bring us to the last type of muscle that we're going to look at in this video. And that's a strap muscle, or a strap muscle with tendinous insertions. And these type of muscles are unique in the fact that they can shorten their fibers anywhere between 40 and 60% of their resting length. So that's a massive amount of contraction. And the obvious place that we're going to see this muscle is our abs. And if we think about when we're doing a sit-up or a crunch, those muscle fibers are going to be shortening a significant amount. And that leads me to my last point, which I've said throughout the video, but I want to say one more time. The form of the muscle is always going to reflect its function. So I've got a few basic examples up here of all the different types that you'll see. But have a look at an anatomical drawing and try and figure out for yourself what type of muscle are some of the other muscles in your body are. I hope this video has been helpful. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.